Hi guys, welcome back. So I have a little bit of a extra bonus video for you. I know people have been really excited about the tutorial videos. I've had a couple people reach out asking about like specific things they'd like me to cover and I'm really glad that you guys are excited about that. So I am working on tutorials currently. The next one should be coming out on Tuesday. That's going to be about Git and GitHub. Um, and then following that, I had someone asking me about um, some questions about Linux versus OS X versus um, Unix and Ubuntu. So I'm going to be doing another video on that, um, as well as some upcoming like just JavaScript tutorials, getting started with some really basic web development stuff. So that's all in the works. I'm trying to make um, Tuesdays regular tutorial uploads, so it's going to be uh, hashtag tutorial Tuesday, so keep your eye open for that. Um, for now though, uh, I got a comment on a previous video from someone called Mr. Account, and he was basically asking me about my background as a coder, about how I got into it, about how I got to be where I am today basically. And that is something that I actually really like to talk about because uh, my journey was not typical. I did not go like through a four-year degree and then go into a job right out of college. So I think it's important to share stories like that, stories where people's paths are different, um, especially if there are people out there like me who are maybe looking to make a career change or who are wanting to get into coding but don't really know where to start or um, maybe you just want to make coding your full-time job but you're not sure if you can or if that can work. Um, I'm here to tell you that you can. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of hard work, but I kind of feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it. So, um, yeah, I put together this little video, um, just talking about my personal journey into becoming a coder. Hopefully it's, uh, it's maybe inspiring for you, or at least you guys, uh, enjoy watching it. It's called My Not-So-Straightforward Path From High School to Software Engineer. So as you guys know, I am a full stack developer, but before I was a coder, I did this. And the pressures of life can wear you down and make your head a mess. And I know it surely gets high dealing with all that. So this is me, about three and a half years ago. I was a full-time musician. I had my own band, and I also performed professionally with a couple of cover bands. Uh, and when I wasn't performing, writing music, promoting my band, or singing with the cover band, I was teaching music to kids and adults. And apparently I also changed my hair a lot. <laughs> and this career, this life, is all that I had ever wanted and all that I had ever really done since I was in high school. But more importantly, I think that it was all I had ever thought that I could do. Because when I was in high school, I sucked at math. Like, I was terrible. I hated it. I thought it was stupid and pointless and that I was never going to need it in the real world. On my physics final in junior year, I literally just drew pictures of the teacher doing stupid things because I had no idea what was going on in that class. All I wanted to do was sing and dance and play the piano and make music videos and do skits with my friends. Because I was a drama geek, 
I was the star of all the musicals, I'd been playing music since I was a kid, and everyone told me that I had a natural gift for music. Now, I'm not saying this to brag. I was good at music and drama and dance, and I thought that my brain just wasn't wired for math. But here's the thing, and this is the first lesson that I've learned on this journey into coding, which is that there is no such thing as natural talent. If you're good at something, it's because you've put in the time to learn how to be good at it. If it's not, if you're not good, it's not because you have some kind of genetic defect that's stopping you. All you have to do to get better is practice. Now, maybe this is something that you guys already know, but it took me way too long to realize this, and it was actually really damaging to my learning to think that I just had a natural talent for music, and that I was just bad at STEM. But of course, I didn't know that at the time, so I just kept not doing math, and I kept doing music, and guess what? I got worse and worse at math, and better and better at music. I went to a musical theatre school, where I also toured all over the city playing drums in an all-girl punk band, and then I did a lot of regional theatre, I toured with another band as a backup singer, and I ended up getting a BA in music. So then what happened? How did I go from being a singer to being a coder? Well, there were a lot of reasons, but I think the main thing I realized was that there were so many other things I wanted to do in life apart from singing, like travel and get a dog and do yoga, and have a garden. And I realized that limiting myself to only pursuing the band with this like single-minded intent was kind of preventing me from doing all of these things. And that's when I learned my second lesson, which is that it's not about what you want to be when you grow up, it's about what you want to do. Basically, being in the band was preventing me from doing a lot of other things that I really wanted to do with my life. So I started looking around for something that would check off the boxes of what I really wanted to do every day. I knew I wanted to do something meaningful. I knew I wanted to do something challenging. I knew I wanted to travel. And last, but certainly not least, I knew I wanted to find a job that would pay me well because I was broke. <laughs> and the more I looked into software engineering, the more it seemed that it checked off all of these boxes. But here's the thing. At this time, I knew basically nothing about computers. I had this old MacBook Pro that was so slow and broken that I could barely use it, but I was too scared to go and get it fixed because I knew I couldn't afford it, and I was trying to use it to promote my band on social media and make YouTube videos and even design a basic website for us, and it was so frustrating because the computer was so slow and it just drove me crazy. And as I was dealing with this all the time, I, I had this feeling in the back of my mind that maybe it didn't have to be like this. I feel like I'm a smart person. And maybe if I just put my mind to it, I could actually learn this technical stuff. So one day I just said, enough. And I googled it. Um, by the way, this is a terrible Google search, you guys. You will never find anything you need on Google <laughs> using a search like this. But I kept at it, I kept researching, and I learned my third lesson, which is that you are in charge of what you learn. You are in charge of what you know. The information is out there. You just have to know how to find it. So I watched a YouTube video and I fixed my own laptop. The hard drive had been failing and I was able to replace it on my own. And after I did that, I started thinking, well, if I can learn how to do that, what else could I learn? And so I started Googling again. And eventually I found Codecademy. And then I found Free Code Camp and Coursera 
and Khan Academy and Udemy and Stack Overflow and Udacity. And it turns out there was a lot of other stuff I could learn. And I started teaching myself how to code. And I realized that once I sat down and started focusing on it, once I took my learning into my own hands and made decisions about what I wanted to learn on my own, things really stuck and I really enjoyed the process of learning. It was slow, it was really hard, but I just kept repeating that first lesson to myself, which is that all I have to do to get better is practice. And I felt really powerful. And then I kind of hit a wall. As you can see, there is a lot of information out there and it was kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of really great stuff, but there's also a lot of garbage. I was getting the basics, but I knew I needed a little help figuring out how to get from being a coder on my own to really working as a software engineer. And so I started looking around at coding boot camps and I found Hack Reactor. Now, I was really skeptical at first because they claim to be able to take you from hobbyist coder to professional software engineer in three months. And I was like, yeah, right, there's no way that's going to happen. I'm not going to graduate from Hack Reactor in three months' time and then be able to earn a six-figure salary. So I was really skeptical, but I was also curious and I think a good mixture of those two things is a good thing. Um, for some reason, something kept pushing me to find out more. So I called them and I asked them a bunch of questions and I attended a talk at their campus and I reached out to some people who had written reviews about the program online and before I knew it, I was doing their coding challenge to see if they would accept me. And by some miracle, I got in. Yay! <laughs> Now, at this point, stuff got real. I had a decision to make. The boot camp was not cheap. I was literally going to have to put my entire life savings into it and take out a loan to be able to go. Plus, it was in San Francisco, and I lived pretty far away from San Francisco. Like, where was I going to live? How was this going to work? Was I really going to risk everything I had on this harebrained scheme? I had no computer science experience. In fact, I had no experience even having a real job. I had never worked in an office before. I had only ever been a musician and a barista, basically, and taught kids to play the piano. I wasn't even good at math. Like, how was I going to do this? Well, this minor freak out brought me to the fourth lesson that I learned on this journey, which is do or do not. There is no try. So I quit the part-time job that I had been working. I took out a loan. I drained my savings account. I called up a friend in San Francisco and I asked him if I could crash on his couch for a while. Um, I had no idea where I was going to live after that, but I knew I would just have to figure it out because if this was going to work, I was going to have to make it work. And it worked. Um, I ended up sleeping on that guy's couch for like three months and during that time, he and his musician friends were basically just partying around me until two in the morning right next to my head while I was trying to sleep every night. And I would wake up in the morning early and I would go to school six days a week and I would code at school for 12 or 13 hours every day, six days a week for almost three months straight. In fact, for over three months straight. It was brutal, but I made it through. I passed the midterm. I didn't get kicked out, and I built my first full-stack app with an all-female team. All of us were girls who had never coded before in our lives. So at this point, you're probably thinking, yay, you made it, awesome. The hard part is over, it's time to reap the rewards, because that's what I was thinking. But I was wrong. The hard part was just beginning. I may have known more than I did three months earlier, but compared to how much there is to know out there, I knew nothing. Uh, there is a saying that the more you know, the more there is to know, and that is especially true in tech. 
and job hunting when you have zero experience and know basically nothing is a grueling, soul-crushing ordeal. Um, if getting into Hack Reactor was when shit got real, this was when shit got way too real. Um, I will not lie to you guys, it sucked. It was hard. I managed to find some freelance work through some friends and a part-time QA testing job, but the coding interviews that I was going on for full-time jobs were really difficult, and the fact that I was also trying to pick up freelance work to build up some kind of resume meant that I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the full-time coding job interviews. Um, I fell into a pretty major depression. There were days when I couldn't leave the house. I once collapsed on the floor as I was supposed to be leaving for work one morning and I just broke down and I sobbed to my boyfriend that I had made a huge mistake and that I missed music and I had no money left and I was never going to get a job and that I had ruined my life. And he just said, you know, we'll get through it. And he was right. One day, a few months later, I got a call from a friend who had been at Hack Reactor with me. He had heard of a job opening at a company, and he knew someone there who he could pass my resume along to. Um, I was really skeptical, again, because the job sounded too good to be true. I would be working for an education company that helps people just like me learn the skills that they need to get jobs in tech, which was something that I really believe in. Um... They were a startup who were just starting to get big. They were well funded. They had partnerships with big companies like Google and AT&T. They had a very diverse workforce, paid maternity and paternity leave, which is really rare in the States. Um, just very supportive culture. They encourage people to work remotely and to take unlimited vacation. And I thought, there is no way I'm getting this job. <laughs> But my boyfriend was supportive, he said to go for it, and my friend was supportive, he said, you know, just pass me your resume, I think they'll like you. And this brings me to my fifth and final lesson of this journey, which is that the people you surround yourself with are your most valuable asset. Without the support of my boyfriend and family, without a friend to help me get my foot in the door, I would not be where I am today. People talk about networking all the time in tech, and it can be kind of a scary sounding thing, or it can sound like sleazy or boring, like you have to go to all these events and be really outgoing and shake a bunch of people's hands, but it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to go to a networking event or do an internship to network. All you have to do is be yourself, put yourself out there a little bit, make one friend, have one supportive family member or teacher or person in your life who can say, you can do this, I'm here to help. So long story short, I got the job. And I hope that you guys can learn something from my journey and take these lessons with you. Um, and even if you don't remember any of these lessons, at least know that wherever you're going may not be where you think you're going, and your path may be slow at times, um, or it may be difficult, or it may seem different from everyone else's, and it probably won't be straightforward, and that's totally okay. As long as you take control of your own life and take control of your learning and surround yourself with people who can support you, it doesn't really matter what you do. So, thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and that maybe it's inspiring to you or helpful to you in some way. Please feel free to reach out to me on any of these platforms. I love to talk to people who are trying to do a similar thing. I love to talk about my journey. I love to help people. I love to teach people stuff. Um, I would love it if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome too. Um, I'll be putting out some more tutorials coming up in the future. And of course, I'll always be doing the Code With Me videos as well, which I hope you guys are liking. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for now. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.